My guest today is Casey Armstrong, who is a former cast member of The Howard Stern Show. Casey has done a 180 degree turn with his life and is now the proud owner of WMAP Radio, a station dedicated to inspiring and celebrating the triumph of human spirit over adversity. He interviews people who have faced incredible hardships only to become a greater version of themselves. Today, he's going to share his own story with us. Welcome to my show, Casey. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, it's an honor for me to be here. Uh, this is a, a huge show, and uh, you've, you've done incredible things, and uh, I'm so excited to be here. So thank you for inviting me. <laughs> you are very welcome. Now, I'm truly honored as well. I mean, you have, I was looking at your, your backstory, all the things you've done. I was like, oh, my gosh. I knew I'd heard about you with the Howard Stern Show, but I kept reading more and more. I was like, wow, he has done a lot. So congratulations. What I really love about your <laughs> brand as well with the WMAP is just we, we have such – such synergy. In other words, I look at all the how to help people um, just look at their life and create inspirational content to help people say, well, if this worked for someone, let me try it. And so you do the same thing. So it's going to be, I know it's going to be a fantastic interview today. So yeah, with, but I don't have the background that you have. I mean, with, <laughs> with, with you being a, a psychiatrist, yeah. um, I mean, that's, that adds a whole nother thing to it. Sure. You know, that, that, that adds a, a, a very interesting take on things. So I'm kind of afraid to talk to you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I promise. I'll give you an invoice after the, after the show's over. How about that? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. okay, gotcha. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. So when, how did you even get in the business, in the show business industry or the radio industry? So uh, when I was in college, I, um, I had my own radio show. It was a talk show. I used to watch Howard's show on the, mm -hmm. the E! channel. Yeah. Uh, because uh, in Kentucky, he went to school in Western Kentucky. He wasn't on the radio down there. So my brother would send me uh, radio tapes because he was uh, up in Cortland, New York. And uh, I kept watching that. And I learned so much from it. Yeah. I saw how the uh, Fred would pass him uh, the, the tapes and, and how sound effects would be played and stuff. So I learned more watching that show than I did in some of my classes. Oh, really? You know, studying radio. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, I, I, uh, I started writing. And uh, I got an internship for the summer because I'd go home to New York uh -huh. uh, for the summer until I had to go back and play the next season because I played football down there. Mm -hmm. right? So uh, so that once I was there interning, uh, they, I started writing some stuff and they were using some of it on the air. So uh, Howard uh, actually invited me to some of the writing meetings. And I was I mean, mm -hmm. that was crazy that I yeah, was I bet. sitting next it's to so the Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Jackie Bartling was there, and uh, and um, I'm sitting next to you know Howard's there. I, I couldn't believe it. So it was it was real experience. So uh, when I left to play my last season, my fifth year, um, I uh, rented a computer. And back then, this was 1997. So back then, I mean, computers were just kind of you know yeah. emails were just kind of happening. I remember, yeah. And uh, <laughs> right? we're roughly I, the same age. Yeah. So, <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, you just, you just look a lot healthier than I do, but, uh, just, uh, so, so I, uh, I rented a computer and I wrote every single day. Like I was in my wow. classes, I'd be writing, nice. um, you know, uh, bits and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So every day, like, like clockwork, well, when I got home from practice, I, I would write a bit or something like that. And they are still using my stuff in the writing meetings. So, wow. you know, so uh, even though you weren't there, they yeah, still so use it. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, it was one of those things where, uh, if you try, if you're dedicated and they see that your mm -hmm. a, a potential employer will mm -hmm. see that those are the type of people that you want around. Yes. You know? Wow. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so, so, so when uh, the season was over, uh, he called me up to do an interview to, to take a position and uh, I interviewed with him and, uh, he said, oh, we haven't hired anybody in like seven or eight years, but, uh, you certainly proved your point. Mm -hmm. Uh, so how fast can you get up here? Wow. And, I got to tell you, I, I got to tell you that that last season when you play football and you're on a, a scholarship, that last semester, the spring semester, you play golf. You, you don't do anything oh, really? with your friends. <laughs> you chase true. the girls around. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I was going to miss that. But, but look, this is the job I always wanted. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. uh, I, I'm like, Howard, I, I just got to get uh, someone to live where I am because yeah. I don't want to stick my roommates with, uh, with an extra yeah. bill. So I found somebody and I was up in two weeks and then that's how I got in there. That's a crazy. As, how, how is it for working with Howard Stern? I mean, he's such an amazing person, brilliant man. How, how is it? How is it working with him? Brilliant is the word. You, you, you mm -hmm. hit it right in the head. The, the, I've never seen somebody, uh, I, of course, I don't know what's going on in his head, but yeah. during those meetings, I would and look at him, like he would make the decision on all these things, like if he wanted mm -hmm. to do it or not. And, uh, you know, we'd pitch him an idea or something like that. And it is, you know, see him thinking, and he was able to, right there, make a decision, 
not like oh, maybe we should maybe not maybe he say okay we're gonna do it we'll do it this way this is a good I- excuse me this is a good idea mm-hmm. and to have that uh, that ability to make a decision and to know what's good for your show yeah. um, with no second thought don't second guess yourself I thought that was amazing yeah and, and what I love about Howard is not only is he brilliant but his ability to be provocative in a way that from a rating standpoint, people either love him or they hate him and they hate him because they want to hear what he has to say. And then his ratings went through uh-huh. the roof. I mean, from so many levels, like, like I said, from a brilliant marketing standpoint as well. I, I just, um, I would actually like to meet him one day. I think he's just, he's just a phenomenal person. <laughs> yeah. 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 He really, really is, is, a, is a, a sweet guy, a nice guy. Mm-hmm. And, um, really just, just really, uh, as you said, brilliant. For you, you worked it for a period of time and then you left the show. What what happened for you during that time when you made your 180 degree turn? I I actually I didn't leave. I was fired oh, uh, okay. around 2000, yeah 2005 or something. I uh, had a big bout with uh, depression. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still struggle with it. Um, I was uh, was using drugs and alcohol. Mm-hmm. And showing up later and later, and not caring really, and yeah. uh, it got it got really really bad. Uh, so I wasn't dependable, and I let some people down, and mm-hmm. I still feel really bad about that. But it was it was time they gave me a chance. They sent me to rehab. This HR came in, and uh, Tom Chiasano, who was the the uh, the GM, uh, sent me to rehab, and I went to rehab for a while, and and was doing the right thing, and. Mm-hmm. Then I thought in my in my infinite wisdom that it was okay for me to go out and do stand up again sober, oh, uh, which oh. never never really did that before. Yeah. You know, you always had to have you know, a couple of drinks. So I'm already so nervous was, thinking um, about that for you. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> Santa Valona's are, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, how did that go? So, okay, so uh, I'm, I'm sure you know where this is going. Uh, <laughs> I just remembered that last meeting <laughs> and telling yeah. the, the the group. I never really speak in the groups yeah. or whatever, but. I said, look, I, I, I'm going to go do stand-up this, this weekend. I haven't done it for six or seven months. Uh, I'm going to go do it for the first time sober. And, uh, yeah, so, so I went to Boston. And uh, the shows, I did great on the shows. But turns out when I was supposed to be back for Monday mm-hmm. for all the tests and for the meetings, I didn't get back till Thursday because I was in a hotel oh, okay. with uh, 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 someone else. Uh-huh. We, yeah. we were just staying there. Um, not doing the right thing. Sure. Uh, and it was just, as, a, as a younger uh, person, uh, that was what got me. That was the final straw. They said, well, look, mm-hmm. we gave you a chance. We can't do yeah. this anymore. Yeah. And, and, and even as you reflect on, on that, that part of your life, do you see the, dis- the difference between who you are today versus who you were then? Totally. Yeah, I, I do. I, back then, I had no faith. Mm-hmm. I, I blamed God for a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And uh, the depression... Depression will make you throw yourself away. I mean, yeah. it, it really, as as you know, I'm sure that uh, you 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 know a lot about this. But uh, it's it's uh, man, it it it's tough uh, when you don't mm-hmm. care about things, mm-hmm. you don't care about the outcomes, mm-hmm. and you don't really think about them. So yeah. responsibility kind of goes out the window. Yeah. And you and it, and when you know what's going to happen, you know you're going to get fired. Now what happens? What do you do now? Mm-hmm. You know, you don't really plan for that. So um, I see I see now in my old age. <laughs> that I want to be around. I want to be around people that are, are uh, that are always positive. Mm-hmm. Uh, that um, that that uh, that bring out the best in each other. You know, mm-hmm. there are yeah, other some people that you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like there's people like a group, but so so. Um, well, you become your group. Yeah. You become the people that, so in psychology, we have what's called the, the law of the group. So in other words, it's really the average. So if someone is really, really motivational and someone isn't as motivational, you'll find that the average turns to this. So the one who's not as motivational will become more motivational. And the person who is motivational will all of a sudden become less motivational. So that's why just like in sports, you always want to play up. One of my favorite quotes is, you can't hang out with chickens and expect to soar with eagles. And to me, I love yeah. that quote. <laughs> Great. I, I, yeah, <laughs> because, yeah, I love that. Yeah, because yeah. the more you want to grow and develop, you can't, you can't be at the top of your game in your friend group. As, as amazing as they are, but in order to get to the next level, you have to level up. So just like what you're saying there as well, you want to surround yourself that's with a- healthier people. Yeah. It's a great point, and and that's that's a that's a great observation, and, and it's it's so true. It, it reminds me kind of the only way I got better in football was I I used to, in a in weight room as I would work out with the linemen. Yeah, and, exactly. And they were you know they were ten times uh, stronger mm-hmm. than me, 
And like you said, me and them would bring up to, to have yeah. just by working out with exactly. you exactly. stronger. So that, that's, that's, that's a great, uh, I, I gotta remember that. That's, that's a great, uh, <laughs> observation. Well, it was, as your journey continued, how did you then purchase this amazing station? WMAP? Uh, well, actually it, it, we built it from, from nothing. I, I, it started in a place I used to live in called East Mariches mm -hmm. and it was a house. It was a house that I was renting. And in the back, there was a, a very small room that was all glass and it was facing the water. So it was cool. Oh, wow, wow. And That's I, cool. and I, I it, it was great to, to, so the microphone was pointed out and you'd watch the boats and it was, it was really cool, but it wasn't a radio studio. And uh, we probably had two, two listeners. It was probably maybe my mom would listen every once in a while and maybe a staff <laughs> member or something. It's you know? like how my show but, started. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Really but it. it turned into what it is, you know? Yeah. So, so uh, from there, uh, we were there for about like a, a year, kind of just seeing how, the things worked and everything and finally we were getting uh, a little more uh a little more press uh, some more listeners and making uh, a little a little more money with advertisers so I was able to move into the next place which was two rooms in the back of uh, a friend's uh, medical billing supply company oh, still not there yet yeah, yeah. but 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 you know it, it was a step up yeah so uh we we you know we we uh worked hard there and finally had saved up enough to buy this abandoned tanning salon that was close, close by. And, uh, you know, we did all the work. Well, I, I did all the work with yeah. uh, a, a couple of construction people, turned it into a, actually a real a radio station, big antenna in the back. And now, oh, really? That's uh, awesome. fa fast forward, it gets, uh, there's a big antenna that picks up the transponder out in Manorville, which puts us on FM station by just pressing nice. a button. That's we crazy. Got offices back there. And, yeah, so so it, it's 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 pretty cool. I mean, uh, to to go from nothing to mm -hmm. something, which is cool. Yeah. yeah. So is simulcast? Is that what you're saying? You simulcast it from AM FM? Yes. Awesome. Oh, that's yeah. great. Oh, that's really yeah. cool. That is yeah. neat. With, well, it's, it's it's a show. Yeah. With it's a show every uh, uh, Monday through Friday, and then the rest is twenty four seven on MAP, which is uh, internet, uh, which is heard in one hundred and five uh, countries. But the wow. FM is just just in Long Island. And uh, we used to have Florida, but we're going to add a couple of FMs, which uh, which is weird. I want to get your thoughts on that. What do you think FM's going? You know, that's a great question. It's uh, it's interesting. I've, I've had when I started as on podcasts, and then when I switch over to I'm on FM and AM stations, and then obviously you, then you have the digital as well. So you have there's so many different people who say podcasts are the new wave. You know, that's what's happened for a while. But I mean, you still can't. When I look at my numbers, it's majority of my are still FM players. And so there's a lot of individuals who still listen to it. So I think it's still a really viable market. Um, you know, you also have, like I said, the digital platforms, but FM, a yeah, FM and AM, they're still, I think they're here to stay regardless of what, what the trends say. But I, I, I'm agree with you. I think that's, you have a, you have a great opportunity to continue to get more traffic into, into really inspire people as well. Well, uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you, man. It's, I don't think that that uh, when you get in a car, I know most most younger people are taking the aux and they're putting in the aux mm -hmm, and they're mm -hmm. listening to podcasts and stuff like that. Yeah. But I don't think you ever replace, you know, just uh, that that dial. I think it will yeah. always be there, yeah. like you said. I agree. Maybe maybe not in the same way it is, but I think it will always be there. Well, the whole thing, just like you look at anything as well, it'll morph and evolve to something different. So when it was years ago versus today, I mean, it's still around, but it still has evolved in some way. So regardless of what the trends say, I, I agree with you that FM still will be part of our future as well. How did you go? So you, so, so, oh, sorry. When you bought, when you bought your, uh, your station and then how did you know that you wanted to have inspirational content? Because that's how it started. It was, mm -hmm. I had just gotten tired of, uh, of living a, you know, making mistakes and, mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, and that's, that's what we're going back to surrounding yourself with the, with the right people. Mm -hmm. I talk to people that inspire me every day. So uh, I'm not, I'm not, uh, hanging out at, at the bar every day. Mm -hmm. well, there's some great stories. Some people will inspire me in the yeah. bar, but for the most part, uh, the people that I'm interviewing six or seven of, them of a day, I'm, I'm hearing six or seven people that, were supposed to die or were supposed yeah. to lose their job, their family, whatever, but somehow did something good for someone else or for themselves. And now uh, they're living a completely different life. And you hear enough of that stuff, like you were saying before. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you certainly do. Yeah. And that's, I know for me, because like, I've, I've, I think I'm at my, right as of today, I think I have 260 shows 
um, as of the time of this recording, and I'm sure in the future when it syndicates, you'll hear I'll have a lot more. But for me, I have heard so many amazing stories just like you. And every time I talk to someone, it encourages me, it inspires me. And then, you know, I hear what worked for them. I'm like, oh, let me try that. And then I hear what didn't work. I'm like, okay, well, let's make sure I don't try that. <laughs> but it really is something because it gives us so much information, so many tools to say, Yes, regardless of how difficult my life is and what I'm experiencing, there is a way out. It may be painful, but there is a way out. And once we figure that out, that's how the, our, our life can literally launch and develop in an exponential way. Totally. And I, had to, I remember what one of my guests said. He said, if you, if you sat with uh, or, or stood with uh, seven or eight people in, in a circle and you all threw your problems into the middle, uh, if you heard everyone else's problem, you would pretty much most likely go and pick up yours. Yeah, exactly. That's true. It really is true. You have written a so couple. We don't have it that bad. Yeah, exactly. You've written a couple really amazing books. Well, they're actually called that. The first one is Simply Amazing, the Special Authors Edition, and Simply Amazing Women. Tell us about this. Oh, cool. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So the first one was uh, Simply Amazing, the Special Authors Edition, mm -hmm. and what I did was I took uh, ten people who had uh, who just wowed me uh, on the radio, and it was kind of almost how the radio thing started and what I learned from each person. So I'm kind of like the guy taking the journey with these people and learning from them. It's just one person. Everybody's going to take their own thing from yeah. each one of their stories. But I was, uh, you know, I was kind of uh, your, your uh, everyday Joe listening to this and doing the interviews and how I reflected on it. And then I had an intro, uh, which was telling everybody why I started it and what I was just telling mm -hmm. you. And then I had, I had some health problems and stuff like that. And this was going to be something that I wanted to uh, leave behind. That mm -hmm. that was a legacy. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Or, or yes, you wanted to do something good in in uh, in this life, you know, something you'd be proud of. And uh, so that's that's how that first one happened, and it, it, it did real well. It got to number nine on the uh, Barnes and Noble Top 100 bestseller list, which was cool. That's really cool. Uh, and I, I got a 710 on my SAT, so it's, that wasn't probably supposed to happen. Uh, <laughs> but but the, it, the, then the next one is uh, I, I uh, focused on the stories of these incredible women. Mm -hmm. So there's 13 women in the next one. And I always said women are tougher than men. <laughs> and and this, this, guess, yeah. this proves it. Yeah, this, <laughs> this proves it. You know, there's one story I can, I can tell you is that I have a friend who does tattoos. And he said, never once in my career has a woman said, no, it hurts. Stop it. But I get guys all the time saying, stop, it hurts. <laughs> I can see that being right? true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. So, Casey, what's next for you? Okay. So, so we got, I think we're going to put out, a, uh, the next book will be on um, first responders. Oh, wow. Uh, because of uh, so many things that have happened mm -hmm. and... You know, there's, uh, these people are just incredible from 9-11 to, uh, to uh, the, the COVID to, um, you know, every uh, emergency. Just people uh, are so brave. Yes. Uh, the, yeah. the medical people. I mean, it, it's, they walk into burning buildings and uh, they, their stories need to be told. Yes. Wow. That's an amazing platform. I'm really glad that you're there to, to share that with everyone. Thanks, man. Yeah, of course. Uh, unfortunately, our time is up. I can't believe it. We literally just flew through all this. <laughs> if my listeners want to find out more information about you, to purchase your books, to listen to your radio station, uh, I know you said it's on internet as well as FMAM. Where will they find all that information online? Okay, great. Uh, my my uh, radio show is on 24-7. So if you go to WMAPradio.com, mm -hmm. you can hear uh, the show all day and all night. And uh, if you want to get pick up the books, you can go to barnesandnoble.com or Amazon.com, or it might be in your local store, but uh, nobody, we, we don't want to send people uh, out. Uh, it's, it's best, I think it's best always to just order it at home. It, it's Perfect. there, it comes, and it's easy. I know, so right? Amazon, <laughs> and Barnes Noble. Casey Armstrong, simply amazing. There you go. Awesome. So what I would also do, if they're not able to find the information in another place, simply go to the show notes in this particular episode at either James Miller at Lifeology.com or Lifeology.tv, and it will link them to all your social media, to your website, and to, uh, to Barnes & Noble as well. So Casey, thank you so much for being an awesome guest on my show today. I really appreciate it. James, I, I see why, you, why you're so popular, man. You do a great interview, and uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you.